everybody had a nice holiday and um, hopefully a great new year. There are a lot of things going on. I was, uh, before I got on the air, I've been watching the Republican uh, nominees go back and forth, and that's been pretty entertaining. Um, Newt Gingrich, who is a resident of Virginia, did not qualify to be on the ballot, along with some others, so the only two people uh, that will compete for the Republican nomination will be uh, Ron Paul and, uh, no, it was Ron. Yeah, Ron Paul and Nick Romney. Yeah. This, this afternoon I have uh, some special guests, and it's the Occupy Richmond movement, and I'm glad to have them here. And if uh, you got any questions you want to ask them, give me a call at 231-7685. They'll be here for the whole show. My show will be from 3 to 3.30, and... You hear me again on the long line at 8.30 tonight, so uh, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves quickly, and then we're going to get into uh, a dialogue. And as I said, if you want to ask Occupy Richmond some questions, uh, call them at 231-7685, 231-7685. Hi. And your name is? I'm Bentley. All right. Hi, Bentley. My name is Chris Gillis. Hi, Chris. My name is Faith Williams. Hi, hi Faith. And I'm Zito. Zito. Zito, I like that. That's a nice ring, ring to it. Uh, and again, thank you for being here and being on my show. Thanks for having uh, us. One of, the, one of the first questions I would like to have somebody explain um, is the Occupy Richmond movement uh, tied to or related to the Wall Street movement? Occupy Wall Street. Um, well, first, I'll start by letting them know that um, each and every one of us speaks as an individual and doesn't necessarily represent uh, the views of the whole movement. Um, mm -hmm. But Occupy Richmond is, uh, I guess, if you want to call it, a branch of the Wall Street movement um, that's been sprouting up all over the country. Um, in large cities and small cities alike. Uh, Virginia has quite a few cities that are involved in the movement itself. And pretty much what the movement is trying to do is bring awareness to um, issues that are going on um, from community level all the way up to federal levels. Uh, things like the corruption in politics, uh, the greedy corporations, the money that's in politics, um, Things on the community level, like uh, foreclosure of houses, the um, the wealth gap issues that need to be uh, brought up, the, the list goes on and on and on. And um, one of the things, again, the movement is trying to do is to bring all these grievances to the tables and actually have them addressed. Um, well, let me ask you this question. Yes, sir. How do you plan to address the grievances by occupying, let's say, your I understand that you broke camp at Ray Boone's house uh, recently. So how do you bring the grievances to the people who can make the changes if you parked at Ray Boone's house or if you parked at uh, Kanawha Plaza? How do you bring these grievances out and how do you uh, affect any kind of changes? All right. Um, well, one way, um, because humanity is so diverse, it's really hard to listen to the needs of everyone. But Occupy is not only like an educational body, but we're also a listening body. And we ind encourage individuals and organizations and politics and our government to listen to the needs of the people. And I think that Occupy as a movement as itself is a listening, a listening source so that you can listen to the grievances and understand where all the angles and diversity, where, uh, where it fits in this one bubble. Okay. I think well, tell uh, me this. Um, I noticed in Richmond, you had, and I'm just talking about the news accounts I can keep up with, you had one, and correct me if I'm wrong, you had one audience with uh, Mayor Dwight Jones, and that was when he came to Kanawha Plaza to visit you. Is that correct? Well, um... first. Huh? What you I, said, Zoo? Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was our first uh, audience with the mayor, actually, when he came down to Canal Plaza and talked to us. Um, he came down uh, with a couple of people and told us 
um, that he supported what we're doing. He told us that he was a, a child of the civil rights movement um, and that he hopes that we could find a way to work together and that he would send representatives down to speak with us at some point to speak with. First he asked if he could speak with our leaders and we informed him that we are not a hierarchical movement. We do not have any leaders. Uh, we all work together. We all consider ourselves leaders. Um, so he had to ask to speak with representatives. Um, so he said he would send his representatives down to speak with our representatives, um, which never ended up happening unless you consider uh, the police department his representatives when they came down to evict us from Canal Plaza. But um, the real audience that we got with him was after we decided to uh, take up camp at Raymond Boone's house, uh, right next door to the mayor. And uh, he sent us a letter inviting us to come meet with him at City Hall, and we sent eight representatives um, over to speak with him for about an hour. They had a, uh, about an hour-long meeting that, that went really well, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So s since that one meeting, have you caught had any kind of dialogue with him? I don't believe so. All right. Now, I was reading an article, and I forget um, which person in the movement made a statement that said that we wanted, uh, the reason why we accepted the invitation to be the invited guest at uh, Ray Bull's house is that we wanted to bring the movement to the doorsteps of the mayor. Right, and I what again I can about? again I can only speak for myself on this one. Um, okay. I think that that was part of the motivation of to go there, um, but it was also we were disenfranchised again when we uh, were not able to take Monroe Park. Um, we felt we really needed a space to actually physically occupy so that we can come together and be together and have a place to to really have group discussions. Mm -hmm. So we did do it to be at the footstep of the mayor's door, that, that is part of it. But I think it's more so, it was more so to have a space again, to have a space to occupy because it gives us the ability to get a lot more done, I think. And I think that was the real motivation behind uh, taking up. It just happened to be right next door to the, to the mayor, which was uh, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it really didn't matter, it just matter you wanted some space. In my so that, but now you have, you broke camp at Ray Bloom's house, now you have no space. Uh, I believe that is false. We do have space, and it's called Richmond, Virginia. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. We're, All right. we're occupied Richmond, and uh, occupying a physical space, whether it was at Canal Plaza or Monroe Park or Mr. Uh, Boone's uh, few acres of land next door to the mayor, that was just a physical space used as a tactic. Um, and when I say tactic, the movement is more than just about sleeping in some tents and um, and hauling around with signs. Mm -hmm. That was one tactic we used to get attention. And we're here on your show, and we've been you on the news attention. and uh, in the newspaper. So mm -hmm. um, that was a tactic used to get attention, to bring attention to what uh, the many issues that have been swept under the table by our local government, by federal government, state government. Um, so now we have this attention. Mm -hmm. And we're moving into phase two, you know. Mm -hmm. And phase two might not necessarily have anything to do with camping. We um, we declared success on um, our mission was to get out there to get attention of the mayor, to get attention from the country, to get attention from different communities, so they can start asking questions like, "Why are they out there for? What are they talking about?" To Those get this conversation questions. rolling. Those you know. are questions people ask. Let me ask this young lady sure. uh, a question real quick. People uh, sometimes wonder who you are. And how would, how would you explain who, who you are? For example, you're saying you don't have any particular leader. And I notice that when you meet, you meet in what you call a general assembly. All right. So for somebody in the public, who are you? Um, Occupy as a whole is it's um, a group of the people and it's kind of a like Bentley was saying we are a listening body not only are we a listening body but we're also because we are seeking to bring attention to so much of the things that um, a lot of the major forces at work being the major media networks being um, major corporations being politicians would like to be ignored um, so we're kind of we're the people, um, and that's why it's so important to get all of the people involved. We don't, if saying that we are the 
we need all of the 99% there. We, we need to open up this listening discussion so that we can then go before our government, we can go before these big corporations, and we can go before these people and really actually demand change. These are the people who are supposed to be representing us and they're supposed to be speaking for us. Well, now we're at your doorstep, we're here, and we're telling you that the majority of us do not believe that you are speaking for us. I've opened up dialogue with a lot of people who claim to be what they call anti-Occupy. And the first thing I have to say to them is always, well, if you feel so strongly about this, you should come to Occupy. Mm -hmm. That is where you should be. That is how you get your voice heard. Um, that's We're willing and, and to listen to everyone because everyone's voice does matter. And that is what's really important about this movement is that we're here to more so create unity. Um, this country has been run on division for a long, long time. And now it is really time to unite the people so that we can be heard, so that the proper attention can be given to the issues that really deserve the attention that we're forced to really not pay any attention to um, because they're, they're given no coverage. Um, you know, they're generally kept out of, of the public eye. And we need to bring awareness to that and we need to bring education to the table so that the people can even know how to formulate and, and, and properly have their opinions. You, you can't create an opinion with limited knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not being given total transparency right now in, in lots of different areas. Um, you go and you try and, and see who owns the Federal Reserve. Good luck doing that because they won't tell you. That's mm -hmm. a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. We need to know where our money is coming from. We need to know um, who these big corporations are who are backing our politicians. Mm -hmm. If anyone else, else accepts money. Part of the Occupy Richmond movement, uh, what would they need to do to qualify? To qualify? Yeah, to be a part of it. <laughs> I guess it is. Show be a up. human <laughs> and up. care and show up. Yeah. And have a voice. Mm -hmm. But how, I mean, how do you attract the people to make them want to come? Mm. Because basically, you know, they see you uh, in the newspaper, on TV, they see you in some tents. But how do you get people want to be a part of it? Uh, and then if you have no leader, uh, like she was talking about some of the things you want to get done, how do you get to the people that make the laws, for example, how do you get to the city council people? How do you get to the people in the General Assembly? You can't do it from your tent. <laughs> this is a hard question. I mean, I think uh, one, uh, someone would have to just be interested in what, you know, the Occupy movement is. And uh, a good way to be attractive is to have everyone included. Um, and one way to do that is to throw events and have workshops and get out in the media and um, basically show that we're not invisible and we're not going away and anybody can join at any time and you don't have to camp you don't have to you know uh, be in a work group to be involved there are multiple ways to be involved mm -hmm. um, you don't have to pay to be involved um, so you could you could be involved by you know sitting on your computer and and reading articles and sharing them. Mm -hmm. now, do, do you do your group have a website? Yes. All right, now give, our, give our listening audience the website information. The website would be occupyrva.org. Okay. And it'll have a link to our uh, Facebook site on there as well from that from that site. So if you can, can go to your website and go to Facebook to get information. Yes, sir, we've got those two outlets. Mm -hmm. So how often do you meet and, and how do you meet? Do you do it online or what? How does that work? Well, um, like you brought up earlier, we meet in a group called General Assembly. Mm -hmm. That's when pretty much all the individuals uh, come to our chosen um, meeting site, which they were happening at Ray Boone's camp. But on January 8th, we're going to reconvene and, uh, <clears throat> and post our new location that we're going to be meeting at um, online. We also have a, a phone number available. What's that phone number? And I'm, I'm going to grab that for you right the now. The phone number is 804-396-4997. Okay. That's for the 99%. 804-396-4997. Okay. okay, great. And um, general assemblies are pretty much when everyone gets a chance to come together. Um, we go over our agenda, 
agenda items, whatever they may be for that day. Um, we have time where um, everyone can step up and talk about what's whatever on their mind, whatever issues going on in their community that they want addressed. Um, we have space for announcements, whether you are uh, hosting a rally or a protest or we want to try to get everybody to get together to go to City Hall. We have um, space for work group announcements. The GA is broken down into different work groups. Um, the medical team, direct action team, uh, outreach and education, um, special events, media. And um, in these work groups, those are pretty much how we perform some of the actions that we do. Again, the camping was a direct action tactic that um, we employed. Um, an example of outreach is something what we're doing here now, where um, <clears throat> we're here with you, outreaching to the public, trying to get them uh, interested and let them know that this is an avenue to have their voice heard. And um, power comes in numbers, and we're all the peoples. So the more the more people, the more power. The more voices, the more ideas that we can talk about and try to employ. Mm -hmm. um, we have a great media team who uh, keeps the website going, mm -hmm. who. Uh, video video records um, and photographs our events and rallies. Um, our medical team helps with basic uh, first aid needs. Okay. We um again, we do a lot of outreach and education, which is enlightening people on what's going on out there. Okay. What? I think we got a phone call. All right. When I was coming over today, I was telling somebody I was going to interview Dr. Richmond, yeah. mm -hmm. and the guy started laughing and said, "Well." they be gone after it gets cold. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. I said, I think this group is serious. And he said, oh, get a call. Thank you for calling. Um, to your group, what do you think to your credit that say that Occupy and just all over the place, they don't have a thing. And again, it's not me saying it, but I'm sure you've heard the credit saying that they're unorganized, they don't have a thing, you know, they don't have an officer, they look like, you know, political people um, being like, sort of like Paul Gomez who make a comment like that. What do you think to your critics? People make comments like that. Hmm. All right. Um, I think maybe all of us give an answer to that. Sure, that go ahead. Sure, we? sure, go ahead. Sure, we can. Okay. Well, to our critics, I would like to say that um, I believe that we are organized. We don't need a leader um, in the traditional sense to be organized and have ideas. We're trying to gather... Um, as many people together to fight this huge beast that we call our um, United States government and these huge corporations that are um, destroying our resources and destroying our communities. Like I, I walk up and down Hall Street, I walk um, through up and down Broad Street and in Churchill and I look around and I see pretty much Richmond City fat cats sitting back while the people on the street, the people in the community are struggling. And the, the working people aren't being represented. Their fight is not being represented. You know, uh, they're worrying about their jobs. They're worrying about their next election. They're worrying about how they're going to fund their campaigns. But they're not worrying about the person who doesn't have heat in their house. They're not worrying about the person who doesn't have food um, in their refrigerator. They're not worrying about the people who go out every day to support this government, they're, they're turning their backs on them. So what I say to our critic though, we're not organized, I, I, I don't get that because we're, we're bringing together, we're a big will in transition and we're in a process right now, we're, we're in phase one and the phase one is gathering the people. We can't do leaps forward without having as many people represented as possible. We're not gonna act like Richmond City. We're not going to act like uh, the American government. We're going to we're going to wait and listen and hear from the people and hear from as many people as possible to get these ideas before we employ our next step. Uh, Faith. To the critics of of Occupy, like I said earlier, um, my my first reply is always: if you have a problem with the way the Occupy is running, then you should be at Occupy so that your voice can be heard because you are part of the 99% and we are here to listen to you. Um, that's my the first thing that I always have to say to any critics of Occupy. After that though, it is, it's very much so that um, we do, we have so much corporate money in politics and, and the majority of people really um, do not 
have a proper grasp of this and how serious this issue actually is. Lots of critics of Occupy say that we don't really have any, that we're all over the place and we're just trying to like attack everything. That I see as true and, and untrue. Um, this is kind of like a big octopus where you have this big head and, and that is the main issue and that is that we do have so much corporate money in politics and there's no transparency. And then from this big this big corp, this big main issue, this big octopus head. You have all of these other little branches that branch out into so many other issues and problems that we see every day. Um, the inequalities in our school systems, the major gap in the in the the have and have nots of the American people as a whole. And people say, well, this doesn't affect me, and, and blah, 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 blah. It, it does affect you. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a family, if you are here and you're living, you're participating, this affects you down to the air that you are breathing mm -hmm. right now and the pollution that is being pumped into your water and into your food. This affects you whether you realize it or not. And so I feel like this is the first part of Occupy, mm -hmm. is getting people aware of how this does truly affect them, how this really does touch their lives every day, whether they see it or not, because we've been trained not to see. We have been trained to turn a blind eye. You asked earlier, how do you get people to care? You have to let them see there's something to care about. There, there is something to care about. There's something to get inspired about. There's something to have opinions about. This, this is this is serious. This is the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. And this is the lives of the people who come after us. And if we're not willing to work on this and change this, then we can't sit back and, and grumble about it. You know, mm -hmm. um, if we're not willing to take action and change, then we're not allowed to complain about it at that point. Because what what is that going to help? What is that going to do? So all all anti-occupiers out there I urge you I implore you please 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 come be come heard come come get your voice out we want to hear from you um, come join us come help us come help us make a change and, and the second thing is our government is not trained to fix issues and this is because if they fix issues that destroys a lot of their jobs. Um, when we, we're a reactive society, we're not a preventive society. So we will spend $40,000 to send an innocent child to jail for the rest of their lives instead of sending possibly maybe the $5,000 to prevent them from going on that road in the first place. Why? Because we can get free labor off of them at that point. Because these people lose their voting rights. Because these people are not, there's all of these issues um, that the government, honestly, they don't want to fix because it's it's not prop it's not profitable for them to fix the issues. And now it's time for the American people to realize, hey, we've got to come together and we've got to fix our own issues. We've we've got to do it ourselves. Um, we we built this country by ourselves. The government did not build this country. This country was built on the back of its citizens, and it's time to rebuild it now. Uh, so the critics of of Occupy Richmond, I just say that. Uh that the, these mainstream media outlets that are that are putting this out in public and, and telling everyone that our our vision is muddled and and that we don't really know what we're doing, you know, they're they're funded by the corporations that we're going against. So it's kind of obvious that uh, that that they would try to skew our message um, to to the public to make us look uh, like a bunch of crazy people who don't really know what we're doing. But uh, as a member, I've I've been there firsthand. I've seen um, I've seen what we can accomplish. I've seen how focused all of our grievances have become um, and to think that we don't know what the hell's going on or what we're doing um, I, I think it's just silly. I actually had a, a conversation with a family member over Christmas uh, about this uh, similar um, discussion. He, he agreed that there's a problem and it needs to be addressed and something needs to be done but he disagreed very strongly with uh, the way that Occupy was going about it and after uh, going back and forth with him for a while, I finally came to the point that, well, you agree that there's a problem and that something needs to be done about this problem. Whether this works or not, whether it changes into something else, at least we're bringing awareness. And can you disagree with the fact that that is a good thing, that we're bringing awareness to the people of the world that there is a problem? And he couldn't disagree with it. All right. Um, I'll quickly say uh, to our, our critics, um, I personally think we need you. I think we need your criticism uh, in order to learn and grow together. Um, I think it helps us grasp a better understanding of all the different angles and viewpoints that are very important to know. 
and uh, as I think the Occupy movement is open and welcomes all critiques. Do you think that we got a, got a call? All Welcome right. to the Star Maker Show. Hello? Hello? Okay, we might have lost that call. All right, let me ask you this. Press. Hello? Press. No, we lost Press. that call. Hello? Preston. <laughs> okay, all right, great. Um, the other question I have in mind is that, uh, according to what I read in the newspaper, uh, you're going, I guess first of the year, you'll be going into a phase two or another phase. Uh, the first phase was to get attention. You've done that. You've gotten plenty of attention. And you have people, um, I hear people talking and asking questions. So you've cleared up a lot of that. Uh, tell us a little bit about this next phase that the Occupy Movement is going into. What is that? Can you talk about that? I can speak uh, one aspect of it because there are many, many, many multiple uh, directions we'll be taking. But starting January 1st in 2012, um, we will begin our first intentional community within Occupy. It's a building project that's going to start in Manchester, and um, the idea is to spiral out into uh, other communities such as Oregon Hill, Carver and Jackson Ward, um, Church Hill, The Hood, uh, where there's already a large um, population of occupiers already. And the idea is to create, a, create these hubs one where um, traveling occupiers can come and, and hang out with us and join us in our, in our meetings, and two, also to reach every community uh, and start um, doing whatever local uh, projects that you can within your communities and to stay interconnected with all the rest of them that we, that we will be constructing. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, also, um, 2012 is a big year that... Um, I think all of us know about that. We have a lot of surprises planned, and uh, if you want to be part of planning some of those surprises, definitely start January 8th. Uh, the Occupy Richmond General Assembly will be meeting. I can check out the website. Um, January is just a big month um, in you general. Have a location yet? We are working on a office space. I know people had um, some questions about that. We're working on getting an office space and some... Um, some warm inside space where we can hold some of our meetings and we could um, have a central office where people can uh, drop off donations, stop by, grab a meal if they need to, just come in and talk, mm -hmm. have their ideas, be able to use the computer or phone if they um, need to. But uh, January, the Virginia General Assembly is coming back. Mm -hmm. and, and we are definitely going to be a presence on Capitol Hill. <laughs> The Virginia People's Assembly uh, is a statewide organization pretty much uh, set up to address uh, grievances and to bring these issues to the legislators on Capitol Hill. They also have quite a few events going on. Um, well, let me ask you, one quick. you said the Virginia People's Assembly. Yes, sir. Now, is that the occupiers? Uh, no, sir. Who are they? Um, Virginia People's Assembly is a, a group that we've endorsed. It's um, many individuals from all over the state that were in existence before Occupy um, came about. They are picking up some of the same issues that um, that we're involved in, but it's, it's a larger collective of, again, people from all over the state, from Charlottesville, from Virginia Beach, Norfolk, um, mm -hmm. Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, they all come to Capitol Hill and bring attention to the real issues, like okay. the issues, and not this skipping around the issues or pushing it off to later. We want to address these issues now. We want them heard, and we want them resolved. Um, again, how are we going to do that? B by hearing the voices, figuring out what the actual issues are, speaking to each other about some solutions, and then putting those um, solutions in play. Okay. Um, Martin Luther King Day is going to be a big day on Capitol Hill. Uh, we encourage each and every one of you to come out there uh, and support us. Um, support yourself. Support your rights. They're, they're there on Capitol Hill trying to slowly but surely take away each and every one of our basic rights. Mm -hmm. 
and we're trying to stop that from happening. And you can have a part in doing that. You know, I, I, I know I don't want to have my rights taken away from me. And I'm surrounded by a group of people who don't want their rights taken away from them too. So what can we do? We go to the source. And um, the source right now um, is Virginia Capitol Hill. And we're going to be spending a bunch of time there uh, throughout January. Okay. And um, again, stay up on Facebook, stay up on the website, read, 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 and educate yourself. There's so much going on out, on out there, and we want people involved. We want people to, to stop giving away your power to um, the government who doesn't care much about you. They're just giving you enough to keep you stringing along. Mm -hmm. But it's time to put our foot down and say, you know, we're about something. And enough is enough. Enough, enough is, is enough. enough. Zero. <laughs> yeah. Lost my train of thought on that one. You want to take it? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. The second phase Wait, of Occupy is um, there are, there's 2012 is such a big year for so many different things, but. Um, we're also trying to get back into our communities, to give back to our communities. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be a strong presence in, in all of your communities, mm -hmm. um, and we are there to help. It's one thing to criticize the government and say, okay, well, they're not doing anything and to, to be a critical eye, but like I just got done saying to the people who criticize Occupy, well, now we're going to do something about it. Um, yet there's many, many different avenues of this. Um, getting back in our communities and listening to the problems and then coming up with viable solutions to fix them ourselves. Um, and getting people involved. When you get people who care about their community, that, that's really all it takes for change to happen. When you can inspire people to start caring about the people around them, to start honestly loving the people around them and their community, that is unstoppable. That's a force that cannot be stopped. And we need to inspire this in our communities. It is up to us to do this. We can't leave this up to our government because they don't need the people to be inspired to fix their own communities because then the people start to realize, well, hey, if, if we just fix this major problem that we were having in our community ourselves, what, 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 are we, what are we paying you to do it for? And you're not even doing a good job. Um, so that's not why, you know, there's, they're not going to encourage us to do this. And that's why it's so important for it to get done. Um, we can't just rely on people fixing our problems for us. We, we have to take an active part. We have to do it ourselves. And, and so that is going to also be a major part of phase two of the Occupy moment is getting back into our communities on a very local and primal level, talking to our neighbors, um, talking to some of the elders in our community, talking to some of the severely disenfranchised in our community, and learning what we can do to help, what, what their needs are, and how they can be met, and how we can come together to meet those needs as a whole. Like Bentley was saying um, with the intentional community, uh, this, this is not only for Occupy, but also for Occupy to help their communities. Um, and like we keep saying, that's what we're here for. We, we truly want to hear the voices of, of all the people and then bring them together and then learn how we can all help each other to help ourselves. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah, I think Faith just put it in the best possible way I could have thought to. I, I think, you know, phase one was... Uh, I guess, you know, getting, getting us out there, we got ourselves on the news, um, in the newspapers, uh, got everyone talking about it, got the chit chat started about what, what's, what all is going on. Um, what we're doing now is we're bringing it back to a community, like she said, we're bringing it back to the community sense. We're going into our respective communities and actually talking to people one on one, trying to figure out what they want to have changed. Um, I've been, I'm a, a resident of the Jackson Ward community and been working with a couple other residents to, uh, to start a uh, community day, a Jackson Ward and Carver Community Day, um, and that's uh, that's really what this is all about. We we just need to get back to the sense of community. The fact that you don't know the person that that lives right next door to you is is crazy to me. I think that we've gone down a ridiculous path uh, to the point that we don't even know the people that live in our communities anymore. And that was one of the most beautiful things I found in my experience with Occupy Richmond down at Canal Plaza, that I found a family within two weeks. Just being with these people for two weeks long and talking with them every day and getting to know them, I, I've got a whole new family and I want that for everybody else. I want everyone to feel that way in their community. That's great. Tell me, when was the, um, 
Again, I'm going by the account I read in the newspaper. But the Occupy Movement went to City Council. Yes, sir. We did it on uh, All right. And then once you got to City Council, what do you think uh, about their reaction to the Occupy Movement now? I did read a part where the mayor walked out. Never stuck around. Yeah, um, I don't know whether because of the Occupy movement or he had another commitment. But when no, he came to my restaurant for dinner the first time he walked out on city council. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Jones. Um, but tell me about the experience of city council overall, because they're the ones that make a lot of decisions that affect Richmond. What was their response to you? Well, um, I get starting with Mayor Jones. He um, he conveniently has something to do. Uh, doing citizen comment periods. Um, not just with Occupy, but when any citizen comes up for their three minutes in front of city council, he conveniently disappears. I think that issue needs to be addressed because how can he know what problems to fix in the community and in his city if he's not around and he's not listening? Um, he's not very easy to get in contact with. Um, also, uh, President Graziano, um, I have a few issues with her. President her ears, yeah, president of city council. Um, her ears are closed, and um, but what she makes that it? she makes that very, very, very clear. Um, I was up to address city council, and as I was talking, I was rudely interrupted by her four times within less than a minute. Um, trying to get my message across about a project that was going up in the Carver community, and um, she was not listening. She completely was not listening to me or any of the other constituents from that area who were addressing that concern. Um, I see them there twiddling their thumbs and, and looking off in the air. They're not really engaged on um, what's going on. I, I feel that a lot of them are there for a paycheck and a lot of them are there for um, the power trip that they have, but I don't really see many results. Um, and I think Richmond City Council for a while has been um, has been on that track, unfortunately, where there's this power struggle between the mayor and the city council, and the constituents get lost between that because it's just a back and forth, and not many results come from that. Right. Reaver Trammel. Hold, 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 hold one minute. We got a call. Thank you for calling the Starbucks Show. How you doing, Mr. Uh, Bradley? How you doing, Mr. Bradley? We oh, got, I got great. the. Uh, Occupy Richmond people here today. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm listening to it. I had. Uh, uh, I guess my concern would be is, is that one that spoke of no identifiable leader. Second, in a country that is governed by law and representation, I think that's one of the reasons why they keep getting resistance. And like the brother was saying in reference to deaf ears, until you have some type of prioritized list to show what the issues are, then I think that they can go forward. But just to state how we think it should be is where I think they're demonizing to those that are occupying without the support. Their issues, they're very evident, but they're telling you that it's not because you are not willing to identify a particular allegiance to some identified organization that they can then define. And that's what I see is the problem. But uh, what is their thought in reference to that? Have they established a prioritized listing of issues? Deal. Deal with that? I, I think that the, the list is hard to put together because the issues are practically infinite at this point. Um, and I think what the Occupy movement is mainly doing is one of the, one of the biggest targets is um, we're able to point our fingers at the monetary system because the government pretty much places value on you as an individual through the value of your bank account. Uh, so that's that's the number one demand of Occupy. I so, so you you against when the Supreme Court identified corporations as people? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I feel as if though the like I was saying earlier, um, one uh, you have this spiraling problem, which Bentley was referring to, that has infinite issues. The main issue behind these problems, as you'll see in, in any business arrangement, when you ever notice that something's going wrong, trace the money. Always trace the money. 
always always trace the money and that's the issue and that's why the the issue is coming about that you can't point a finger at a, a one major big corporation or or make a prioritized list because when we trace our money through the corporations we trace them back to this federal reserve bank of ours who is has no transparency we don't know who owns it and that is the line that's why i'm in agreement with y'all i'm right there with you but what i'm saying in reference to the government because they're utilizing their money that they're able to influence through lobbyists, the legislators, in order to create the laws to allow them to do the deregulation and so on and so forth. That is what you're up against. So until we're able to get the legislators to create the laws that benefit the people versus the big corporations, then we got something. I'm in agreement with you. Go back to 1621, uh, the merchants investors that started back there with the old money. I'm there with you. But we're dealing with that. So what do we do as a people then to address how they are constitutionally, lawfully doing what they're doing? We take our power back as a people. We represent, we elect these people to represent us. And everyone is in agreement that it's not happening. So that is why it is so important that we all come together. And we go, hey, guess what? You're not doing a good job. Take corporate money out of politics. We don't, we're not asking. We're demanding. Take it out. Take it out. We've given you your power. And now we're telling you, take the corporate money out of politics. And I think that you'll find when this happens, a lot of our politicians won't even want their jobs anymore, to be quite honest. When you take the money out of it, what are they there for anymore? And, and that is, that's the rallying cry of Occupy. Come together to take our power back. We have a... Another call. Thank you for calling. The Star Maker Show. First, uh, again, I want to remind the young people what you're doing. Um, I, I, I know the Democrats probably and probably have a perk of the numbers that shown that you just gave the Jesus out of them. Uh, what are some of the groups or what kind of, should we say, trinkets they have offered that kind of quiet you guys down? I'm, I'm sorry, caller. Can you re repeat that question? Yeah, I was saying the two of Democrats and Republicans. Well, really, um, they're not offering us anything. They're trying to shut us up uh, by what they put out on the media. They're trying to shut us up by kicking us out of public public spaces. They're. Um, they're never really bringing anything to the table but their old games. Mm -hmm. Like, And anybody who wants to step up against the government or who wants, who thinks they can do a better job, um, I think the government always has an answer to that, and that's to try to shut them up. Um, there's There's been no bribery, um, not through Occupy Richmond, um, not, not through Occupy Richmond, so all we can say is that we're not shutting up anytime soon, though. Similar. We're not going to take any of their gifts. We don't want their gifts, you know? <laughs> um, Faith? I think that's one of the main reasons the Occupy is so very hesitant and, and so very against um, these leaders that everyone keeps telling us we need. It's, it's not easy to bribe or try and coerce a collective group of people. It is easy, however, to coerce or bribe a few people or a single person. That's, that's what we see is happening in, in our politics today. And that's why we're kind of very um, hesitant to, to allow that to happen to us. Um, they would, in effect, if they wanted to try and, and bribe or coerce us to try and get us to shut up, then they would. They'd have to, they'd have to bribe the 99%. They'd have to bribe the people. Um, and and it's, that's not possible. So instead, they have to run a discrediting campaign um, where they make us sound crazy and like we don't know what we're talking about. And, but you notice that um, when it comes to this discrediting campaign, they don't ever actually come and talk to us and, and put us in front of the people. They'll tell you what we think, but they won't let you hear from our mouths what we're thinking and what we're saying. Hey, that's interesting. The, uh, we have another call. Thank you for calling the Star Baker Show. I have as my guest the Occupy Movement. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, look, first of all, first of all, I want to thank y'all for just for Occupy Richmond. And um, 
<laughs> Thank you. Well, but, uh, I'm glad to have been, I'm so glad to have Liam. Along with you, Star Maker, talking about the issues that we go through daily in life. And everybody's past trying to make it political and all this other kind of mess, right? But we know that the government does what the government wants to do. Yeah. And it's probably the government other people, better people, and poor people. Mm -hmm. So I, I applaud y'all, y'all fans. I applaud y'all for coming to the station. And I hope it won't be the last time it's coming. Thank you. Thank you well, so much. You. We'll be back. Don't I'm worry. already totally welcome to come back because uh, one of the things we try to, I try to do on my show at WCLF, I can't speak for the station, is that I try to empower and enlighten the people through information. And we don't always have to agree, but I think the information uh, should be put out there. Well, that's right. Because uh, the, the best thing that we know that the scripture also that. Lack of knowledge, of people were first, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that's why we're here at WGLM to keep the knowledge going, and, and, and so people can stop tripping and stop participating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I agree with you on that. So, so, so whatever we in, make yourself feel at home. If I was close, I'd bring all y'all fish down with your thumb. Make it about ten. Right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. That was a great call. We. We thank him for calling and uh, you know giving the support to your movement. Um, I think the other reason yeah. people may wonder <coughs> about the Occupy uh, Richmond movement is that uh, during the Civil Rights era, people try to make change through uh, vocalizing, through marches and protests. Mm -hmm. But in this particular instance, it seems that uh, the Occupy movement is much different. I mean, you're peaceful. Mm -hmm. Every time I read about you, you know, you've been peaceful. Mm -hmm. But the concept of occupying a place to make change is is really unique. And I've been keeping up with it in the newspaper. And this movement is in over 1,500 cities mm -hmm. across the country. And also, this is just not a uh, movement in the United States. This is a global movement that many people do not understand and they are unaware of. Welcome to the Star Maker Show. Hello? Hello? Uh, hey. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. I'm Turn your radio down, son. Turn your radio down, son. Back off. Mm -hmm. And 
and they ain't looking to come back home, they're looking to come and watch it going and go back in that state in their areas. And in order to eliminate the turmoil that we have in our within the government of governmental function in this country today is to eliminate this extensive membership of, of, of uh, functioning of our politicians in Washington. Give them a two year limit and now they the president of our state two years. So now the congressman the state senator that has been for over forty years. Well, you have a good point. You have a good point. And one of the reasons that happens because we don't have term limits in this country, and the other problem is gerrymandering. What happens is that the Republicans and the Democrats, uh, every 10 years when they do the redistrict, they, they redistrict these districts uh, for their political uh, existence and their political power. For example, the Republicans want to have districts that have the leaning toward Republicans, and then the Democrats want a district that leans toward the, toward the Democrats, and then the individual representatives, right? Then the individual representatives, right? And then the individual representatives, they want a district so that they can stay in office. They're not worried about uh, the people. Just for a moment, sir. What you expressing to us to me is very explanatory. What you're saying. We are not interested in the guy in Washington, the Republican or the, the Democrat. We are interested in the vote. We vote them and we vote them out. That we told the mayor, uh, the guy that was governor down in Virginia. You were voted in by the public, you can be fired by the public. So we vote them out. Hallelujah. <laughs> job occupation in the political arena for eight years. After that eight years, you are out. We don't care if you don't grow more, you're allowed to take back the double. The public run the country, not the political way of Washington. Well, you, you, taxes, I agree. I agree with that, but until the people come to the point where they're willing to vote the people out of office, if you don't have term limits, then they, they will get continue to be reelected. That's one of the reasons people like Charlie Rangel, he's been in Congress for 40 years. Time to go. And, he, and he's in his 80s, and he still won't step down. Time to go. So that, that's what happened. Right. I agree. I think you're on the same page. I think you make a really good point, and I think that 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 would help out a lot if 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 that were to happen. But I think what, what we're going on. Agreed. But all I'm saying is, is we can't put you know we can't put a band aid over it and, and hope it and hope it goes away. We we really need to. To take it head on and deal with it at the very core, and that's that's money in politics. We get if we can get the money out of politics, then the politicians will care about people, which is what they're supposed to care about. That's what their job is. But we can see that they're driven by profit, and if we can take that away, then the politicians will be once again for the people. But the, the other problem you have, the, the other difficulty people. in voting people out of office is finding good people to run. Exactly. For example, three people have already announced that they, they would not run for re-election on the school board. Good. So if the people from the community don't step to the plate and put their, hat in the rank, had put their hat in the rank and we run, then the political insiders are going to find, going to find their candidates and, and run their candidate no. to keep their agenda going. But uh, thank you for calling. That was a great call. And I'm at the thank end of you, my sir. show. And I want to thank the Richmond Occupiers for being a part of the Star Maker Show. And they're always uh, welcome to come back. Just give me a notice. I'll be glad to talk to you again. And I, I have a show tonight at 8.30. And uh, you're welcome to come to my show at 8.30, one or all of you. And right. uh, the next, I think the next part, I'm done. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> next Thanks, time sir. is P.T. Brown. Get there, and I think it's coming up. I'm not exactly yeah. sure. Uh huh. I just wanted to uh, go ahead and inform everyone of the next event Occupy Richmond is having. It is Occupy the Hood on January 7th at the Oak Grove Playground. Please join us and see what we're about.
And thank you so much for having us here on the show today. And to all of you out there who are listening, we really appreciate you listening to us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming. Glad to have each of you. All right, babe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're good. I told you. You got to open the door. Appreciate Thank it. Yeah, free to come back anytime. Yeah. So, what's the name of your show? All right, 3 o'clock. Three. 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 Three.